Hey guys, welcome back to KNS Get Out. It's Kyle and Shannon out here. Where are we today? Oh, we're just gonna jump right to it. Huh? I don't know. We we might we we have the name for the land. We've picked it. We've used it. We like it. It feels good. We've settled on it. We'll talk about it later. We'll come back to that. But stay tuned. We are on our land, our property, and we're back here on the top side of the hill where Goatville is gonna be. It's 82 degrees and 65% humidity. I always joke that it's like 500% humidity. I was like, I wonder what it really is. So I looked and it's like 82, feels like 87. So we're gonna show you what our initial ideas are for the goat pen. And we're kind of debating on a couple of different things, different spots, and maybe you guys can help us out and tell us, you know, hey, be careful of doing this or that because of this or that, that's great. But we're excited. All right, let's get to it. <laughs> I think that's how you're supposed to treat T-posts. <laughs> I don't think Just they're- throw them. Yeah, I don't think they're meant to be treated gingerly. Unloaded. Like I said, 317% humidity, I checked. It's 82 out here, it feels like 98. At least 413% humidity. I'm already sweating. <laughs> so, Chad and I kind of came up with, based on his experience and what our initial needs are going to be, we discussed what would work best for a goat pen and to get the goats acclimated to just being out here where they have never been and that new place to them. We're going to kind of just keep them in a pen for a while while we get used to taking care of them, feeding them, you know, water, doing all the things you got to do with goats as we go to build out the electric fence that we're going to run out, out into the thick brush so they can help us clean that up. So we picked up six of these 16 foot goat panels. So they've got the little four by four inch holes. Our two boy goats that are gonna be ours here in a month or two, they do have horns. And so we wanted to make sure we got something small enough that they weren't gonna be able to get their head through and get locked. These are almost three times as much as a cattle panel that has, I wanna say it's about an eight inch long this way and maybe six inch long that way. And Chad was like, yeah, they will definitely get their horns in there. So. We stepped up a little bit, got six of these. The idea is to run a rectangle. We'll have a 16 foot edge and a 16 foot edge, depending on where we put the gates. And then on the long side, we'll put two of the panels. So we'll have it 32 feet long. Obviously, if we put the gate in the middle of those two long panels, that adds another four feet of width. So it'd be 36 by 16, which I think I did the math was about 576 ish square feet or something like that. I think they recommend anywhere between 15 and 20 square feet per goat inside their pen. But I figured more room's gotta be better, right? Hopefully. So we picked up two of these gates with the mesh wire in the bottom. In fact, the folks that, are, that we're buying the goats from, they use this exact gate, I think a couple of them, one for their main pen and one for their pen where they can hang out with the chickens and other things. They did have to run some wire through here because one of the goats did some acrobatic goat move to get through this at one point in time. So we may end up doing that too, but that's not a big deal. I just wanted to make sure we had plenty down here that keep them from being able to get in and out. So we'll have one that Shannon and I go through and then one on the other side that we'll open to let them out into the pasture and graze whenever the time comes. We also got 12 of the six and a half foot T-posts. Uh, I don't know how permanent we want this pin to be. so. We've got to figure out, you know, if we're going to use like actual fence posts for the gate, I don't know that I want to concrete them in because as they start to do work here, if we decide we want to move them or whatever, I don't necessarily want those four posts concreted in that I got to dig up with an excavator or whatever. So we may just bury those far enough down that it would contain, you know, at this point in time, we're looking at goats and eventually probably some pigs. Based on what you guys said in our research, the pigs are really good about foraging what's on the ground where the goats are more what's in front of them or above them so you can kind of do a mix to clear land using the pigs and the goats going back and forth so that's the goal with how we get that cleared this is the idea for at least the external structure of the pen and then we've got to move on to building them some things inside of it they can climb on they can sleep in they can hide under for any kind of shelter and i don't know if i'm going to electrify this yet we're going to have to figure out predators you know Obviously this is to keep the goats in, but just as importantly, I wanna keep the predators out of it. So we wanna wait until we can get the camper out here. We're trying to coincide those two things, is getting the goats out here. We wanna be out here first, 
so that we can really monitor and see what's going on, make sure they're safe, not just let them out into Goatville right out of the gate. Right out of the gate, get it? My other little concern is I don't have the most level ground right here. There's just a gradual downslope all the way down to the valley where the pond used to be. So we have the skid steer coming, so I could take that and kind of grade this a little bit. But basically what Shane and I are going to do is hold up these panels and see what direction they can go so that they're not going to have big gaps anywhere. And so that it can be a good solid construction build that, you know, we don't have a T-post that's wobbling or one of these that's bowed or something like that. A little bit of perfectionism in me, so we'll have to make sure we are comfortable with it. But that's the plan. That's the goal. So let's maybe stand some of these up, kind of see how they lay across the terrain and make sure that it's going to be feasible for, for the pen to be here. Okay. Cool with that? Yeah. Let's do it. So those are 16 feet a piece. Each one's 16 feet long. So we're looking at 32 feet. I, as <laughs> anal perfectionist as I am, I would love to run it parallel to the road, but the terrain slopes diagonally toward the corner of the property. So it would probably be best to run it at an angle, which is hard for me. Well, it doesn't necessarily need to be at an angle. I was wondering if we should put it like in this area right here where it's kind of cleared. Long ways this way? Yeah. And then go perpendicular to the road, parallel to the driveway. Yeah. Because this gives us a nice cleared area to build a shelter for them. Well, I mean, remember, I have the skid steer coming, so I can clear anything if we don't put the pin up before. As long as we just plan where the pin's gonna go, then I can grade, I can clear more brush, I can push down these little trees around that big guy. We can do whatever. You mean pull another panel or do you want me to hold that one? Why don't you hold this guy? I mean, we can lay it down because it's a lot easier to pull with two people. Which way are you going? Which way? Well, that's what I was going to ask you. Are you thinking 16 wide this way and 32 long that way? Let's lay it out and see how that looks. That way? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so let's carry this one over there. I don't think we're far enough out. I don't either. So why don't we start at the point of that end and work our way this way. Okay. Stand it up with me. So come this way with it. Perfect. Can stand it up. I need to come my direction. I'm ready. That's about as straight as you can get. Okay, lay this one back that way. That way? Yep. We'll either need to put the gate at the end coming in and then at the end going out. Okay, so let's put this last one on and see how we did on making a, <laughs> an even rectangle. I feel like we're a little bit off kilter. Well, it's a good thing we haven't put anything in the ground yet. Can you straighten this up with me? What do you think? I think that's a good start. We just need to figure out if we can put those gates, if we have to put them on big posts. I mean, I think you'd want them on something sturdier than T-posts because, you know, yeah. we are swinging and stuff. What we need to do is go look at those posts that they pulled out of the chicken coop for us and see if we can reuse any of those posts. Yeah, because yeah, they're a little bit smaller. I don't care to use, you know, the big power pole that's down over here because I'd rather use that for like the gate onto the property or something. Yeah. Okay, so if we come in from this direction and then we'll lead them out this direction eventually to go graze. Yep. And then we could take our electric fence right off the corner and go 
out on the outside of the woods there. I'm sweating, <laughs> more humidity. So if we put the pin like this, it helps with my little bit of a OCD that I'm sure we will break at some point, but this is fairly perpendicular to the property line, kinda. It's not bad, but I think this would be good. I think this is level enough. This gives us a good distance from them, but also keeps us close enough to them that we can keep an eye on them. And if we have the gate here and the gate in the same location on the other end, we can come in and out up there as we need to. And then we can set up our electrical fence off of this corner and just go right down that wood line and then cut in wherever we can. I may have to take my chainsaw and cut their obstacles up just a little bit to get the fence through there. And then again, you know, we can start the electrical fence wherever we want, either all the way at the end of the goat or the pin down there and go down the wood line and over. We're 150 feet or so from the property line, probably. It's kind of hard to say. We do have that survey coming. I wish we had that already, but scheduling has just been really fun with contractors of late. So we could start the other electrical fence like just right there on the other side of the gate and just come in right here or even just on the other side of the end of that big log in there, if you can see that. And then whenever they're ready and trained, we can let them out this one and go work and play and feed and eat and be goats. It's gonna be, be wonderful. goaty goats. And goaty goats in Goatville. What do you think? I think that this is a great starting point. Okay, that's a big goat pen. I don't wanna actually like put any of the pen together until we have the skid steer and we have everything cleared as much as we want it to be. Yeah, no, I agree. Which means we gotta move all this stuff again? Well, we can leave it here for now. We don't I'm, have to move I'm it yet. I'm being facetious. It's just really hot and humid today, so maybe a day that's not quite as hot and humid, it would be better to move this out somewhere else. Hey babe, are you hot? <laughs> I don't know. Does it look like it? Is my shirt wet down to here, or am I just crazy? It looks like it. Am I turning red yet? I'll be red. This, this will be the rest of the summer, guys. This is what Kyle does in the summer. Take after my uh, big brother, Adler Farmer. That tree, I was kind of asking Shannon as we were laying out the pin, do goats, would they enjoy having a tree inside their pin? and we could build things for them to climb and they can goof around grabbing that stuff or should we leave this outside of the pen? And if we do, should I just cut it down so that it's not tempting them all day to come mess with it? I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Do you put trees in goat pens or do you try to leave that stuff out so they have as much square footage as they can possibly get? Because I'm open to any of it. Okay, so I think that's enough on the pen for today. I think that gives Shannon and I a good idea as to where we want to put it. This ground is level enough. I'll still kind of work on it a bit with the skid steer and then by hand, we'll just throw a lot of this stuff that was all beat up out. You know, of course the goats aren't gonna to be too selective with what's in here. They're gonna make it their own. We had somebody come do some work for us on the land. So we're gonna roll that footage right now. Shannon and I, when we came out and met with him, he explained everything to us and then we immediately regurgitated it for you so that it was fresh on our minds and we had all the details. So Shannon and I are gonna walk up here while you guys watch that and then we'll, uh, we'll jump back in right after. All right, so what we are officially calling operation bring the camper <laughs> out to the land has a new step in the right direction today i've been talking to a septic company to have them come out and inspect the septic and see if it was of any quality and we got good news this morning we weren't first anticipating off, wait, wait wait first off they actually showed up that's true we can't get anybody else to show up and work they actually showed up to work yeah that's important so as you know, we've been battling with the well and I'm not faulting the company that we're working with. They're great people, a great company, but when we get our torrential downpours this time of year, all the chicken farms around here that run on wells are up in a, in a fit. And so these folks have to go and take care of them very promptly, obviously, because that's their livelihood. So we're being patient, trying to get that on the schedule. But in the interim, I talked to a company that would come out and inspect the well. And for a small fee, if they could find it and pump it, it would have been a much more budget-friendly solution or a whole new system. You guys are probably familiar with the prices. You could kind of take a guess. We didn't have to go that route. We were not anticipating them coming out today, but we were doing our other things, going throughout our day, and we got a notification that somebody was out here and they had a cancellation that pushed us up in line, so they just came out and started digging. And the good news is... The good news is we can use the existing septic. Yes. Praise the Lord. Absolutely. It's we neither one of us had our hopes up. We just thought, you know, man, this is a this is just a never ending battle. It's going to take us forever to get this camper out here. But as you know, we have the power. We don't have it run over here yet. I do got to look that up and figure out how to get a 50 amp service brought over here. But look at this. Ta-da! 
That is probably the least exciting thing somebody has ta would for you in quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> but it's got a cap. It's concrete. He said it's not a homemade type thing. When we were demolishing the house, this is exactly where we thought the pipe came out because we could see where it went down underneath the house, that four inch drain pipe, and then it goes into the septic tank. Now in today's standards and regulations, that's a little too close to the house. Uh, if he were to put in a new system, that's not where it would be. Now, the house is no longer here. It's just for the camper. It's just for the two of us. This would not be something we could use with living quarters or a house. With a or shop, shop or with yeah. a house or something maybe, like that. Maybe with a shop with just like a small, small bathroom, something that, I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll figure that out down the road. But for right now, for us to get out here on the land, we can use this and we can bring our camper out here and hook it up to it. So that's fantastic. Oh yeah. This is, this is one of those steps in the right direction. Yes. New day, new news. Wonderful day, just made our day. It's been raining, so we were kind of, <laughs> you know, when you're in camper world and, and you have the land and you want to come out and do stuff, the rain is just like that. But it's okay, This this I didn't know he was gonna be able to do this today and his son's gonna come back out and pump it this evening and he said, you're ready to go. He told me what I need to do basically to get that metal pipe converted over to the plastic that we can thread onto with our pipes from the camper. So we're making a trip to Lowe's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to Google a little bit because he said some words I didn't know. <laughs> he even tried to cut it for me and uh, their saw was apparently dead. But we have the saw. We can do all that stuff, I think. And if not, I know people. Shannon's dad. I'll call my dad. <laughs> call my father-in-law. <laughs> He's good at that stuff. So if we were to go with a new system, the regulations are a thousand gallon septic tank, like no smaller than that. And then lateral lines have to go 160 feet out, kind of like with the well. This is technically grandfathered because it's already in the ground. It's functional. He likes where the water level was. Um, he said it was probably replaced in what, 70s or 80s maybe? He said 70s. Yeah. So it's not as old as the house was. He saw the pipe that goes out this way. He just knows it dumps in the field back there, which is downhill. Kind of makes perfect sense. Obviously, we don't know what the lines are like off of that pipe per se, but he said go ahead and use it. <laughs> we could not be happier because that price tag was a whole lot less than a whole new system. Yes, it was. And so power septic gotta get that water and just a little update we're not moving any animals out here until we actually are going to be out here ourselves so the goats won't be here until we're here we are thinking about a livestock guardian dog so all of those things are coming but none of that will be here a until we get water and b until we are here in our last video where you guys met our new goats uh, we obviously we told you how novice we are and how little we know and you guys did a fantastic job We cannot tell you how much we appreciate it the information you are throwing at us I do have contact information for some other youtubers that are doing this kind of thing and I may reach out to some of them I think it's a really good suggestion a lot of you made and also potentially even getting the current parents of the goats See if they want to come out and kind of scope the land and give us any of their pointers from their experience of years of raising goats uh, One of the, the general consensus that you know you guys have told us and it makes perfect sense Sense. obviously we can't just bring baby goats out here by themselves and say hey good luck fight those coyotes <laughs> I don't know maybe maybe we could talk Chad into bringing his uh, LGD and then give one to us for free yeah right I don't uh, think that's happening uh, we have a birthday coming up it'd be a great birthday gift even if it's just a promise or maybe he just has a hookup for somebody. I bet he just has a hookup. That could help us out and get an LGD because <laughs> our little princess Nala far this thing from an LGD. I think we're going to have to get an LGD for Nala. Like they're, it's just going to have to walk around with Nala and protect her all day. Surely it's fine to stand on a concrete septic tank, right? Hopefully. Yeah, so that was awesome news, guys. We did not expect that. Shannon and I were praying about it, but we really did not get our hopes up because we were like, there's no way after seeing the house, seeing the shape that everything else was in, there's no way that that septic tank is going to be reusable. He estimated it's going to be about 600 square feet. And so this is it. 600 square feet or 600 gallons? I'm sorry. He has 600 <laughs> square feet. That'd be huge. <laughs> 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 he estimates this one to be about 600 gallons. If they put in a new one, you can no longer do anything less than a thousand. I told him it was just Shannon and I with a camper. And if we go to build the shop or house or whatever over here in the future, we'll probably get a dedicated new septic system for that. Just so we know exactly it's up to code. It's big enough. It's going to do what we need it to do. However, in the interim, this will be perfect for us in the camper. If we fill this thing up, we're doing something wrong. But here's the cool thing too. He exposed this right here. This is actually the footing, the footing on the back of the house. This is where that crawl space was. I don't know if you guys remember from some of the early videos, Chad even joked about making me crawl under there. 
Uh, but this is where that footing is. That pipe came out about 10, 12 inches underground. Uh, so that pipe, that four inch drain pipe comes in and he exposed this as well. This is what I, who have never plumbed before, ever, anything, no plumbing, this is what I'm gonna plumb up and turn it into an RV hookup. This is a win, this is a blessing, this is totally, yeah, I, Shannon and I, like I said, we were not expecting good news on this. And he wasn't, I don't think they were out here for maybe. No, we got the notification that the driveway camera was going off. And then we were like, hey, somebody's at our property. And before we knew it, they were pretty much done before yeah. we could even get out here. Yeah, we hopped in the truck and started heading out here. We're like, oh man, we gotta, gotta get ready to get all this stuff and go get our gear and da, 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 da. And so we're shooting out here and we're about halfway here on the interstate. And the guy calls me, he's like, hey man, I'm out at your land. We did this and we did that and you're gonna be fine. And I was like, Oh man, you, I, I don't even know what to say. So we still, we were able to catch him and that way we, we could come up here and he was able to tell me like, hey, here's how you plumb this now. And I was looking at him like, no, I thought, I thought, you, I thought you were gonna do that. But no, no, I'm gonna do it. But I don't think it's too bad. I think it'd be pretty straightforward. So excited about that one, guys. That's a big win. Huge win. It's really, what's the word? Is it ironic, I think, that you're so happy about a poopy situation? <laughs> <laughs> oh. That was terrible. <laughs> it's a positive poopy situation. Man, I wish we had some chairs out here that we could sit in. It's hot. The air's not moving today. Yeah, there is no breeze. The trees are not moving at all. Yeah, the humidity is at 2100% now. <laughs> I checked the app. It says it feels like 197 degrees because of it. Like this isn't sweat on me. This is just the humidity I've collected. <laughs> Do you think you're going to survive? I need water. I gotta go get more water. <sighs> okay. So we did have somebody reach out to us about some chairs. We uh, struggle with stopping from working every once in a while and just sitting down and enjoying the land. And we decided, man, we have got to get a way to chill out here. And ironically, somebody said, hey, do you want some chairs? But before we show you that, we do want to tell you what the name of the land is going to be. I'm going to let Shannon do it because I think she fell in love with it before me. And again, this came from one of you guys. So killer job on all the comments. There were so many comments on that video. And I know I really this... struggled keeping up with them, to be honest. She did. There I were mean, so she... many comments flowing in. She has at least one page in her notebook that's just tally marks. <laughs> and then she wrote the original ideas down below. She was doing a killer job at going through and, and, and Here's tallying a lot, all that. Though. But as you can tell, it's hot and sweaty out here. I think I've complained 20 times. We'll see how many of those Shannon actually puts in the video. Uh, but this would be one of those times where it would be great to sit down, grab our water, cool off. However, we're very fortunate and happy that we have so much shade. Yes. Some of you guessed it in the last video by a couple of our hints that were pretty blatantly obvious, I think. Well, they guessed some versions of some it. Some versions, yes. Yeah. So we have decided to call our lands. We're no longer going to refer to it as the land, but the official name is now Shady Acres Farm. So whenever we refer to it, we call it, we're gonna head out to Shady Acres or we're gonna head out to the farm, but we're officially calling it Shady Acres Farm. Yeah, in fact, we, you know, it wasn't until we went and met our friends with the goats and then we started talking about it and thinking about it and going through the votes that she had and we were like, you know what? This really is more gonna be a, a farm soon. And we do absolutely love how much shade we have out here. In fact, absolutely. at the campground, we don't have any trees to shade our camper and it is hot. Yeah. It's hard to keep it cool in that camper. Yeah. I mean, Nala's panting all day. I'm panting and sweating on the recliner. And <laughs> so out here, we will have a lot better shade from all angles. Still would like to get like a carport, you know, type roof over the top of it, a little pole barn thingy dilly, whatever you call it, uh, just to kind of help with some of that heat dissipation because whew, it's hot. Just a little structure. But Shannon's been doing an awesome job when we're talking about going out to the land, which is what we've always said for the last seven, eight months now. Uh, but she's been saying, hey, let's go out to Shady Acres. Or I'd say, hey, let's get out to the farm, you know, and it's starting to roll. It, it, it starts to bring it that personality and kind of, make it real make it more, more real yeah we got the mailbox now like that's an official farm piece <laughs> yeah our buildings all cleared so it's now been stamped by kyle and shannon this is our land and its name is shady acres farm all these acres are shaded it's got to be shady acres farm shady acres farm good job guys thank Can't you tell for you, all of your suggestions seriously like really some can. of you really put a lot into it you even broke down why you one of you even came up with a logo that went with the name so kudos thank you thank uh, you for 
all of your suggestions and yeah. all of your input. We appreciate it. Yeah. Very grateful. You guys have been the best. Several of you have asked about the bags for the wasps and I actually think that they are working a little bit. I'm going to go around and I'm going to put some more up in more trees and more areas, but we only got dive on by probably two wasps today. And they didn't chase us quite like they were before. They didn't. And we were actually like down closer to where we think their nest is. So, so far it's helping. I don't know if it has anything to do with a storm rolling in and that they are just already in their nest for the day, but we'll see. So we enjoy doing all the work that we do out here and it's exactly what is needed out here. There's a lot of work to do. However, there are times that we're like, man, why don't we bring some chairs out and sit down? Take the load off for just a minute. We did have a company reach out to us that they sell Adirondack chairs. Shannon has loved Adirondack chairs for a long time. I didn't know what they were. <laughs> <laughs> so she's like, hey, that would be kind of cool. So they sent us a couple chairs and we're gonna put those together out here and we're gonna leave those out here so we always have a place we can come and relax. These do have a cup holder. That's a huge necessity for me. And Shannon drinks a lot of water. Like, like a fish, I like water. So much water. So she's always gotta have a drink close to her. But this this will give us a nice way to relax rest our legs, rest for a minute. And if you guys are in need of a chair like this, we'll let you know what we think about it and see if it's something maybe you should pick up for yourself. Otherwise, we're gonna have some nice chairs out here to hang out in. So the nice thing about these chairs is we can leave them out here because you all know we don't have any shelter for them, but they are weather resistant. They are made out of a poly lumber. So basically they're super durable and we don't have to worry about them wearing or anything like that. They are also oversized, so they can hold up to 350 pounds. Kyle's not close to that, but he is a little oversized, so. I need things, I, yeah, it's, I, I live in a different sized world, so. It was important that we got the oversized chair. Yes. And the cup holder. <laughs> I'm stuck on the cup holder. So we obviously, we won't be able to speak to the longevity of the color, if it fades, how well it does against the weather just yet. The one that we already put together, it has sat out in the rain. It got stormed on one time. It looks like it did when we got out of the box. It was a pretty straightforward assembly. The directions are really straight to the point, not a whole lot to it. You get the tools and the hardware, everything you need to put it together. So I would recommend cutting the tape and then flipping the box back over because it is all packed in there into styrofoam and it makes more sense to come out that way. So all the bolts but two are the same length. Yes. And those two you don't do until near the end, if I remember right. So makes it kind of easy, pretty universal. Comes with a little Allen wrench for us. Okay, so you're gonna attach the bottom to the first side. And like most all things you assemble, you just kind of tighten these enough to keep things in place till the very end and then go back and tighten everything. It actually has in the instructions not to tighten everything too tight until the end. And armrest supports are in place. All right, so now I get to set it up and actually put the armrest on the supports. It's gonna be the one bolt inside here, coming through that guy. All right, then we just put the other one on the other side. Okay, so now that we have both of the armrests on, we just gotta put the back on there. I will say this is a little bit easier with two people because getting all the holes lined up now that we've already got some of it pre-assembled can be a little tricky. This is also the part where you will use the two longer screws, the very last step. You're using the only two long ones that came with it and they are basically going in from outside of the armrest into the stable brace across, the horizontal brace across the back. Keep that in mind, because I totally put them in the wrong holes <laughs> when we did the first chair. This is where it comes in handy to not have all the screws. There's a wasp, man, you son of a gun. Dad gum it, man. <laughs> Wasp spray. It's somewhere. <sighs> he knew we were vulnerable. We're ready today. He took his shot while we were both. We both had our hands here. full. And Shannon was the trooper that stayed in place. Good job. Thanks. I was going to get the raid to save you. Yeah. <laughs> I saw. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no problem. I'm here with the raid, ready to protect you. <laughs> I appreciate it. We did get a couple surprise attacks there. All right, and so now we go back and tighten them all up. 
So while Kyle is tightening these, it does say that they are an easy clean item. So basically soap and water is all it takes to clean them up. And if you have something on there that you can't get off, they actually send a little sanding brush with it. So that's kind of nice that you don't have to worry about using chemicals or anything like that to clean them with. Ta-da! Broke a sweat putting a chair together. <laughs> well, it is like 85 degrees out here and 300% humidity. I think it's beautiful. Yeah, I also ran from wasps, what, three times? Yeah, left me in the dust. It gets my heart rate up and uh, <laughs> I get my cardio every day dodging wasps. <laughs> That's literally where my workouts are coming from. All right, well, I say now it's uh, time to test them. Let's try them out. All right. Now you just grab your drink and your favorite can of wasp spray and you're all set. It's a pretty nice night. These are pretty comfortable. It, it's gonna be really nice. Like I said, there've been so many times that we've needed a rest or needed to sit down and we didn't have a place to do it. <laughs> We're gonna try that again. There've been so many times that we've been out here working or just playing or whatever. Most of the time it's always work. I just call it playing. It's and kind of the same thing. Yeah. And we've needed a place to sit down, we needed a place to relax for a minute. This is a great chair for that. There will be a link down in the description below that we are Amazon affiliates, so that will support the channel a little bit. If you don't need the chair, don't buy the chair. The chair is what it is. It's an Adirondack chair. You get the nice lean, you get the high knees. You know, it's comfortable. And it's got big wide armrests for me. Got a high and it has our cup rest. holders. And the cup holders or the wasp spray holders. He's gonna have bugs crawl in his cup now. No, I'll just spray him with Raid. No, wait, can't do that. I know guys, this is a little different than usual, but being out here, having the chairs, now we will be able to bring Nala out, bring our fire ring over, have a nice little real fire instead of the fire pit that we have to use at the KOA. And once we get the camper right back here behind us, this will be our front yard. So this will be a perfect place where we can just come out in the morning. I can have my coffee, you can have your tea. It'll be perfect. Watch the sunrise over there, catch a deer or two. Anyway guys, if you are in the market for an Adirondack chair or just a chill chair in general, and you're looking for something of this type, I, I would recommend these. If you're new here, smash that like button and go ahead and subscribe and turn on those notifications if you like what you see. That way you don't miss any videos. If you've been with us all this time, we appreciate you. We thank you. can't tell you thank you enough for coming back and watching us try to figure out what to do out here. A couple of city slickers in the woods. We appreciate your support. A lot, a lot. It's very meaningful. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.